How are your DevNet Associate studies going? When I was studying for DevNet Associate, I had to look up the differences between XML, JSON, and YAML, and why we use these different data structures. In this video, I'll go over the differences between them, and by the end, you should be able to identify each one easily. If you want to be notified of videos like this, subscribe to my channel and hit that bell. So let's look at XML. XML stands for Extensible Markup Language. It was developed by the World Wide Web Consortium, and XML is a way to describe data in a human and machine readable way. In networking, XML is used to exchange data between systems, and it can also be used to store data. We can leverage APIs to query network devices and get a response in XML, and then change their settings or parameters. So let's take a look at the structure of XML. Here I have the output from the Meraki sandbox that I use to query using Postman. And XML has a tree-like structure, and it begins with a root element here at the top. And then it contains child elements. So here's the, the root element and the various child elements. Up at the top, network is enclosed in angled brackets. And this, again, represents our root element. And then you could see the child elements begin start with angled brackets as well. These child elements here you can see as name, which contains Meraki San Francisco Wireless as its name, and then it has an end element for that same name element. There are other various elements, and here's a node element, for example, which contains other details such as this MAC address, and you can tell that each element will be in an angled bracket and also have an ending uh, element in an angled bracket with a, with a forward slash. Within these child elements, we have the data. So you can see again the MAC address and its data, especially with the name element. And there are, of course, rules for maintaining this structure. An XML element must contain the start and end tag inside of these angled brackets. And as you see here with name, there's the end uh, node starts with an angled bracket and also ends with an angled bracket. Data contained within that element is indented, which you can see from this structure here, as I'll try to point that out, we have node that starts here and then anything within that node is indented to indicate that it belongs in that child element. So all this data here is a child element of node. That is the gist of XML. So when you work with network devices, don't expect the XML output to be displayed in such a pretty way. Sometimes you just have the raw output, but you could use Python to prettify it like this. So when working with XML files, the extension will also be uh, .xml, as you can see here at the top. All right, so let's take a stab at JSON. Uh, JSON or JavaScript object notation. This one is my favorite. JSON, like XML or YAML, is a data structure used for storing and exchanging data. When you query a network device, you could receive a response in JSON format. As, as I have received it, querying the Meraki sandbox using Postman. It's human readable. It's very easy to go through and see the data that you're looking at, which is why I like it. Put simply, JSON uses key value pairs. So in this output, taken again from the Meraki sandbox using Postman, we have what's called a JSON array. That's the response that I, I got from the sandbox. So what is a JSON array? Well, that is uh, what's enclosed in these square brackets. The bracket is what represents the array and the contents inside of it. So the, the objects inside of the curly brackets here, they are separated by uh, commas, as you can see. So that's how you can tell that this is JSON. Uh, sometimes you'll receive it as an array with each object. And let me try to separate the object here so you can see it. So in this JSON array, here is a single object which contains data. And here's another object which contains another set of data. And so the data 
or the objects themselves within the array are actually separated by this comma here after the curly bracket. And since this, this object here is the last object, it does not have uh, a comma at the end. And so if you look at, <clears throat> excuse me, if you look at the uh, JSON array, it is ordered as a list of values. So that's what that is. Inside of the curly brackets, there are values or other objects. Here is a value right here, right? So this is a key. That's the key, which is ID. And then you have a colon. So again, the key, the, any of the data that you see here is going to be inside of quotes. So the key is in quotes. And then you got your separator, which is the colon. And then your value also inside of quotes the value is assigned to that key. That is your key value pair. And then as you, as, as you, there are more key value pairs, they are separated by these commas right there and you go down to the next line. And so we can see this key, which is called organization ID, its value is assigned to that key. That is a unique value assigned to that key right there. And then we go ahead with another comma and more data. You can see that within this object, you can have more arrays, such as this array right here. And this is uh, querying Meraki, so it's telling us that there are different product types within this organization ID. They have what's called a, a, an appliance, and then comma, switch, in quotes, like all the other data, comma, and then wireless. No comma, so that's the end of that, that sequence there. All right, so with, as we talked about uh, more data, we go into each of these objects. The, the objects will be contained inside of these curly brackets. As I've mentioned before, we have our key value pairs and the, the key IDs with their values. So when working with networking equipment, I have found that uh, personally working with JSON, it's easier to parse with the eyes so you can easily find the data you're looking for. And one thing to note is that JSON files end with the extension .json. All right, so there we have JSON. So now let's look at the last one, YAML. And depending on what you read, YAML either means yet another markup language or YAML ain't a markup language. I'm not sure which one it is, but what you should know is that it's another structured data format. And YAML files typically end in dot yaml or dot yml when using yaml it's important to know that it is case sensitive and spaces are used instead of tabs indentation is used for structure and colons create the key value pair similar to what we saw in json and then dashes are used for a bulleted list structure and here at the top you can see that the three dashes at the start of the YAML file marks the beginning of the file. So in this example, I'm working with key value pairs, sequences, and arrays, all part of the YAML data structure. Here we start with sites colon. This is creating an array, which contains two sites. Those two sites are San Jose and San Diego. The dashes represent a sequence, these dashes right there. And you can see more dashes are over here as well. The sequence is really the bulleted list that I um, referenced earlier. And then this, you can see these indentations, these, creates, uh, these create a new block or, or scope for the data. So as I indent for the first site, San Jose, it will create another array right there. You see the this array in there created another structure. And then the dash represents the sequence. So in this array, I have a list of key value pairs. And then we move on to the next site. So what you can see here is that that quotes are not used similar to what we um, or what we saw in JSON, there are no quotes used here. It's primarily the indentation and the colons that that separate keys and values. And so this is a key called name and assigned to that value is San Jose. And within 
that we are creating um, we are creating uh, uh, sites or we are creating more data called hosts and then within that host we have more key and values assigned and this is a list of different hosts within that section there and then we do the same for San Diego so this is my whole YAML file, which looks like an inventory of my network devices. I could use this YAML file to automatically configure these devices, just as an example, using the details or parameters inside of this YAML file. So in conclusion, here they are side by side. We have XML, JSON, and YAML. So notice the differences between each, how the syntax is different, and how the tag elements are used. You'll come across each of these when you start working with network automation or even network monitoring as you use your Python scripts. If you found this content useful, do me a favor and hit the like button. And now that you know the differences between XML, JSON, and YAML, which do you like best? Leave a comment below. Thank you for watching.